So let's have the simplicity function theorem work on a few examples. Uh, let's begin with well, one very uh, uh, simple example close to what we were doing earlier about the circle. Well, the, uh, the, 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 the thing I drew with this downward looking parabola and the uh, level line corresponding to, the, uh, to a circle. Okay, so let's do something like I'm looking at this function well, that would be rather an upward looking parabola and I'm looking at zero level line. Okay, of course you know how to solve that. That are going to be all the points x2 plus y2 minus 1 equal to 0. So x2 plus y2 is equal to 1. So that's the unit circle. Okay, but let's put that aside for a moment and let's try to uh, see that under the angle of the um, uh, of the uh, implicit functions theorem. So what does my implicit implicit functions theorem say? It tells me that um, if ever df over dy is different from zero, so let's say you've got some um, points, well, you whichever you want, uh, let's take uh, y is equal to 1, x is equal to 0, for instance, that would be a nice point a, b. Uh, but I'm going to study df over dy. Okay, why do I do that? Because that's one of the hypotheses of the theorem. Well, that's the sole hypothesis of the theorem. We should have df over dy different from zero. Okay, so where is this happening? df over dy here, it's just going to be 2y. So we need y different from zero. Okay, why? What does it correspond to? Again, if you, you know that your solutions are going to be on that unit circle and you can describe if that is uh, your level line in the plane x y you can describe each portion separately well you can describe this uh, here and uh, the one down there okay we can describe them separately there's only going to be one point that uh, that proves problematic well two points actually the one where I've got that the derivative in y is going to be equal to zero. So for y is equal to zero. Okay, so that's why uh, this is the first thing we have to check if we want to apply this implicit functions theorem. Okay, so that's going to be okay, but in everywhere except in uh, one zero and minus one zero. But from from those two. Uh, places, what do we know from the theorem? We can conclude from the theorem that uh, there exists phi such that phi of x is equal to y and my function applied to x phi of x is equal to zero. Okay, that's the conclusion, well, well, the first conclusion of the theorem, that implicit function exists. Okay, second uh, thing we get from the theorem, we get, we know that phi prime of x is going to be given by minus df over dx, uh, okay, uh, divided by um, df over dy, All right? So, all these implicit, uh, all these uh, derivatives being applied at the point x phi of x, x phi of x. Okay, so uh, df over dx, that's just going to be, let's do the calculations on the side, df over dx of x y, that's just going to be 2x, df over dy of x y, that's just going to be 2y. So now if I apply this uh, uh, thing to the formula I got, that's minus 2 times x divided by um, df over dy, but apply it to x phi of x, that's 2 times phi of x. Okay, all right, so that's minus x over phi of x. So let's see what it corresponds to, what, what it means in the end. Okay, so we get that phi prime is equal to minus x over phi of x. Let's start at some points that uh, 
we know exist well at some point that belongs to we know that the answer is the unit circle so the answer is going to be the unit circle let's take a non-trivial one uh let's take uh, for instance uh, that one okay that point that belongs to the unit circle that would correspond to pi over three so what's the x uh for pi over three x is equal to one half and y is equal to uh square root of three over two okay so these are points that are easily calculated, all right? I know that this point uh, is in my f of x, y of 1 half square root of 3 over 2 is equal to 0. Okay, that's for sure. So now let's see uh, what this gives me. If I look at this for x is equal to 1 half, so I get that at phi prime of 1 half because that works. We get that the derivative in y is different from 0. Uh, so minus 1 half divided by phi of x, which is in that case square root of 3 over 2. Okay, which gives me then uh, minus 1 over square root of 3. Good. What does that tell you? That tells you that the um, phi prime, so the slope of that curve, that local curve, is going to be minus 1 uh, over square root of 3, which seems, well, quite consistent. Okay? So the slope of this curve should be minus 1 over square root of 3. So that if you don't know any other good values, if you know that you are maybe a bit smaller than the angle uh, square root, uh, the angle pi over 3, so that instead of being here, you, you have uh, an x here, okay? So how should your uh, y move? Okay, in accordance to that. Well, you just try uh, this, the line, the, you'd find to get an approximation of the corresponding y. You just write the equation, uh, the line equation of the tangent that goes, the, the tangent that I've drew in light blue here. Okay, and that's going to give you an approximation of the y if you want to remain on this unit circle. Okay, so, um, uh, well, you can also check that it is absolutely consistent with what you expected. Actually, you know that y should be given by, on the upper side, by the square root of 1 minus x2. So, um, you get that, that, and that would be the real phi of x. So that phi prime of x would be given by, so 1 over 2 times minus 2x over uh, square root of 1 minus x square. Okay, so that's uh, the derivative of this function, which, well, you can simplify this as minus x over square root of 1 minus x2. So in our case, what do we have? Uh, we get the minus uh, x was 1 over 2, so minus 1 over 2 over uh, square root of 1 minus 1 over 4. So that's uh, square root of uh, 3 over 4. So that's square root of 3 divided by 2. The 2 simplifies minus 1 over square root of 3, which is, of course, exactly the same thing that we obtained here and here. Okay? It's just that in the first case, this, is, this one was the result we obtained from uh, solving, well, well, from applying the implicit functions theorem, whereas here, uh, it's because we knew in that specific case the exact value of um, of our phi function, okay, and we could find the derivative. Okay, so let's do another example. Uh, let's say that I put the set, I'm describing uh, a set, let's call that S by saying it's going to be the set of all x, y's in R2 such that x4 plus uh, y3 minus x2 minus y2 plus x minus y is equal to 0. Okay, and the idea is describe this set 
So you know it's going to correspond to something, probably some curve in, in the plane. And we want to locally at least have an idea of what it looks like uh, in a neighborhood of 0, 0. Okay, so how should we treat this kind of problems? Well, we're going to treat it using uh, the uh, implicit functions theorem um, by saying, well, in a neighborhood of 0, 0, uh, I'm going to consider that this corresponds to uh, the zero level curve of the function f of x, y is equal to what was given. So x4 plus y3 minus x2 minus y2 plus y, uh, sorry, uh, plus x uh, minus y. Okay, so that corresponds to the zero level curve of this uh, function. So obviously, yes, zero, zero does belong to that. And I want to know, can I find phi uh, such that uh, if I put x phi of x, then I'm still on that level curve for x close to zero. Okay, close to in a small neighborhood, in a small interval around zero. Okay, so we just uh, check for the hypothesis of the theorem. So we do df over dy at that point x, at any point xy, that's going to be uh, 3y squared minus 2y minus 1. Okay, maybe at that point you want to uh, pause the video and try to finish the solving by yourselves. OK, I'm going to go on, but please pause the video to try to solve that. And when you're done, just come back here. OK, so that is going to be uh, working whenever this is uh, different from zero, which well is something you can solve uh, for which values of y this is equal to zero. df over dy is equal to zero, so it should be for h for any value of x and y, but here the, the, the first derivative in y doesn't depend on x, so that's uh, not a problem. So uh, you make the delta, delta is uh, 4 plus uh, 12, so that's 16, so you get two roots, uh, y1, so 2 plus minus square root of 16, that's 4, divided by 6. So that gives you 6 divided by 6, that gives you 1. Or y2, uh, 2 minus 4, that's uh, minus 2 divided by 6, minus 1 over 2, man, minus 1 over 3. Um, okay, so unless y is equal to 1 or negative 1 over 3, that uh, you will be able to apply the implicit functions theorem. So here it tells us that in a neighborhood of 0, neighborhood of 0, 0, that function phi exists. Furthermore, we can find uh, something else. We can find that phi prime of uh, x in that neighborhood is going to be given by minus df over dx x phi of x divided by df over dy x phi of x. Okay, df over dx being, so let me compute that on one side, df over dx will be 4x3 minus 2x plus 1. So, in particular, at uh, 0, I get that phi prime of 0 is going to be given by minus uh, 1 over uh, minus 1. So, plus 1. Okay, so that tells you that your curve is going through that point, but furthermore, it has um, this tangent. Okay, so now I'm asking you, what would you do in a neighborhood? of, uh, well, let's take 1, 1, okay? What's happening is, is that df over dy at that point is then equal to 0. So what can you do? You can express, so you know, so that you know that for x is equal to 1, there's going to be a problem, okay? So uh, you should... Uh, there's going to be a problem, whichever it is, okay? So, but 
Here you won't be able to uh, plot a nice um, curve uh, phi of x, y is equal to phi of x. Okay, so 